There are several sparrows singing in the sky, but when they land, Peter Rabbit crashes into them and runs in with all his legs. Along the way, he manages to elude the sly fox, chat with the frog, and promise the hedgehog to bring him a head of cauliflower. Peter meets his cousin Benji, and also his sisters Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. They always fight about who's older. All the rabbits wear jackets. For example, Peter has a blue jacket, and Benji has a brown jacket. The rabbits enter Mr. McGregor's garden. The old man is mowing the lawn. Peter throws vegetables over the fence, and his sisters and Benji catch them. The farmer's lawnmower stalls, and the old man hears suspicious noises coming from his garden. McGregor chases Peter around the garden, trying to nail him with a rake and threatening to bake him into a cake. The rabbit easily can escape the farmer, but decides to stick a carrot down his pants. McGregor is furious. Peter gets his jacket caught in the wire, and the farmer is about to grab him. The rabbit is saved by McGregor's neighbor, Beatrice. She invites the rabbits into her house. This woman is an artist and paints strange pictures that no one understands. She also loves to paint rabbits, but for Peter, her paintings bring back painful memories of his deceased parents. The thing is, McGregor has baked his father into a cake. The old man puts Peter's jacket on the pole, and Rabbit wants it back. He sneaks back into the farmer's garden, takes the jacket, puts it on, and runs to the gate. At that moment, McGregor covers him with a sieve. He holds the frightened Peter by the ears and laughs, because now no one will save the rabbit. Suddenly, McGregor has a heart attack. This is the end of his 78 years of life. Peter brags to the other rabbits that he defeated McGregor. The farmer's body is being taken away in an ambulance. Rabbits enter the garden to enjoy the farmer's vegetables and fruits. Other animals, including badger, fox, pig, and deer, rush there too. Then, the animals break into McGregor's house and make a real mess. They've never had such a great party. The rabbits hang a portrait of their parents over the mantelpiece. And we move to London. McGregor's nephew, Thomas, works as a manager in a toy store. Thomas loves his job and dreams of a promotion. Unfortunately, it's not him who gets the new position, but the manager's nephew. He is also informed of the death of a great uncle who lived in the village. A man in a rage destroys the sales floor. Thomas smashes and breaks everything and even beats up a teddy bear. He is fired and told to get some rest. Thomas learns that he has inherited a house and land in the village. They're worth a lot of money. It should be enough to start your own toy shop. Thomas arrives in the village. He sees a terrible mess in his uncle's house. The animals are trying to hide, but some are not very successful, especially Tommy the Badger. The first thing Thomas notices is the pig. The rest of the animals show up. The man throws out all the uninvited guests and cleans the house the next day. He tidies up the vegetable garden and even fixes all the holes in the fence. Beatrice visits him. She meets Thomas, gives him a pair of binoculars for bird watching, and asks him not to close the wicket gate to the garden so that the animals can walk there. Thomas agrees with the beautiful Beatrice, but after she leaves, he still locks the wicket gate. But Peter knows a way to get into McGregor's garden. He brings Benji with him. Together, they sneak onto the farmer's property. Thomas chases after them and proves to be more agile than his old uncle. The man catches Benji, puts him in a sack, and says he will kill him and make sure the rabbits never come back to his garden. Thomas gets behind the wheel of his pickup truck. He puts the sack with Benji in the passenger seat. Peter and his sisters get in the back of the truck. On the way, they distract Thomas and swap Benji in his bag for binoculars. Thomas throws the binoculars into the river, but then realizes his mistake and pulls it out of the water. He gets behind the wheel and drives into town. The rabbits in the back of the car go there too. A man buys explosives and an electric fence at a hardware store. There, Thomas meets Beatrice, who has come into town on a bicycle. Thomas offers her a ride home. The rabbits see Thomas load the bike into the back of the car and Beatrice get into the passenger seat. They also jump into the back of the truck. In the village, the girl invites Thomas to visit her. The man says he likes her paintings, all but the rabbits. The girl assures him that they are very sweet, cheerful and kind, and even know how to ask for forgiveness by pressing their foreheads together. The rabbits watch as romantic feelings develop between Thomas and Beatrice. They ride bikes together, do yoga, go boating, sit around a campfire at night, go on picnics, and run away from the rain. Peter breaks into Beatrice's house. Thomas pretends that he likes this rabbit. Beatrice wants to draw a portrait of Thomas holding Peter. As she prepares for the creative process, the rabbit and the man get into a real fight. In a furious struggle, they damage one of Beatrice's paintings. Thomas blames Peter. Beatrice gets very angry and chases the rabbit out of her house. Then Peter declares war on Thomas. His sisters are actively practicing shooting fruit with slingshots. <coughs> Rabbits set traps in Thomas's room and lay rakes on the floor. When a man wakes up, he falls into each trap. Peter is very pleased. 
To get back at the rabbits, Thomas puts up an electric fence. He uses peanut butter as bait. The hedgehog tastes the treat and gets such a shock that some of his needles fly off. But you remember that rabbits are very clever, don't you? They turn off the electricity, happily lick peanut butter, and dance in the farmer's garden. Thomas wants to leave the house, touches the doorknob and gets a massive electric shock, and then another and another. A man has to leave the house through the roof. However, he falls off the roof and is knocked unconscious. Thomas only comes to his senses at night. He's so angry that he stuffs a bunch of explosives into a rabbit hole under a tree. It is then that Beatrice notices him. Thomas lies to her that he was picking wildflowers. A man gives a girl a bouquet, and she invites him over. The next day, rabbits attack Thomas in his own garden. They shoot their enemy with a slingshot. At the same time, the man is talking to Beatrice, who cannot see the rabbits taunting her neighbor because of the fence. They find out that Thomas is allergic to blackberries, and they aim these berries directly at his mouth. Beatrice asks if Thomas will be disturbed by the loud music and goes inside. At this point, one of the berries goes directly into the man's mouth. He falls, but at the last moment manages to inject himself with an antihistamine and revives. Peter is surprised. It's some kind of magic. Furious, Thomas throws explosives at the rabbits. Our long-eared heroes are in grave danger. Mopsy is hurt, but wait, it's only a tomato. Peter attacks Thomas and hits him with his paws, and the fight continues. Beatrice can't hear the explosions because she's painting her new picture to loud music. When she comes back out, she notices that Thomas is holding Peter the rabbit. A man lies to Beatrice that a poor rabbit choked on a radish, and he saved rabbit's life. Thomas accidentally drops the remote control he was using to blow up the rabbit holes, and wily Peter immediately presses one of the buttons with his paw. Beatrice realizes that Thomas has been lying to her. There are a few more explosions. One of the huge trees falls right on Beatrice's house. The woman is desperate. She no longer has a house or paintings. Now she has to leave the village. Peter has won, but why doesn't he feel any joy? Thomas returns to London and meets the manager of the shop where he used to work. It turns out that his rival quit and went to France. When the man hears this, he agrees to return to his job. The rabbits blame Peter for what he's done. Not only did he get rid of Thomas, but he also destroyed their burrow and Beatrice's house. The rabbit promises to make things right. They travel with Benji to London on a real train and ask a local street rat how to find a toy store. The rat gives the rabbits a tour of London and leads them to the store where Thomas works. Peter asks the man to return to the village. Thomas thinks a talking rabbit is a bit much. A man chases the rabbits around the store, once again breaking and destroying everything. He finally agrees with his long-eared enemies. Thomas jumps out of the window and heads back to the village with Peter and Benji. They use every possible vehicle to get there in time. And what about Beatrice? She loads her luggage into a taxi and is about to leave the village. But Peter's sisters shove a carrot down the tailpipe of a car. It helps postpone the trip for a while. After repairs, the taxi is on its way. However, the car's path is blocked by a deer coming out of the woods. Peter and Thomas make it back before Beatrice leaves. Thomas begs her to stay in the village and confesses his love to Beatrice. Beatrice rebukes Thomas for trying to blow up the rabbits. Then Peter takes the remote control out of his jacket and shows her how he pressed the button with his paw. The rabbit with the guilty face presses his forehead against the girls to show that he is very sorry. Beatrice forgives Thomas, but now she has no place to live. Just then, a couple drives up to Thomas's house. It turns out that the man has managed to sell the house. Thomas wants to cancel the deal, but the buyers are adamantly against it and are about to inspect their new home. Peter and his friends come to Thomas's aid. The rabbit reconnects the power to the doorknob. The couple tries to enter the house and is electrocuted. Animals sneak into the house, make a terrible mess, and set traps. The buyers immediately abandon their new home. Beatrice stays to live in the village. Some time passes. Beatrice and Thomas are now a couple in love. They move to London and find a new job. Flopsy writes a fascinating story about adventures in the countryside, and it's simply called Peter Rabbit. Thank you watching, folks. Hope you liked it. You can check another interesting recaps in the channel. Don't get left behind. Join me for best movie recaps. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Goodbye till the next recap.